Hello everyone. This is your This is your Stories with a Stoner host, Julie from On the Top Boutique. And I'm trying something just a little bit different. Uh, we ha I I had started a series Stories with a Stoner last summer where I was trying to just get you guys short inspirational stories um, while watching a video of me doing what I do best, which is stoning. Um, so we are reading from the book Sheep Ears by author Sherry Witt. Um, and we're going to pick up in chapter 17 and it is titled, um, have you ever crawled under a chair? All right, guys. So, oh, did my video stop? Nope. Okay. Sorry. Just, you know, kind of new to all this. All right, here we go. Chapter 17. Have you ever crawled under a chair? When I was seven years old, my dad had a radio spot on which he preached a sermon and sometimes sang songs. One day, he had a bright idea and asked me to sing on the show. Back in the good old days, radio was the main form of entertainment. I couldn't wait to be famous. We went to the studio and I gave my best shot at the song Mansion Over the Hilltop. But when they played it back, I was mortified. How can that be me? I sound like a country bumpkin. Please, please, please don't play that on the air, I begged. I crawled <laughs> under the chair, and my dad and the man at the radio station had to pull me out. They were laughing, but I didn't think it was one bit funny. They played my song on the radio, However, I had no more thoughts of fame after my infamous debut. I think you guys can probably hear my dog drinking water in the background. I'm sorry. Back to the story. You can imagine my fear when my friend Gwen recently asked me to appear with her on a web series show that would be taped on stage at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. My first instinct was to say no. Nevertheless, she explained what would happen once we got there. On the show, the host interviewed guests and asked questions, sometimes confused them, but made for a lot of laughter. There was no guessing what he would talk to guests about. This made the idea even more intimidating. I remembered what Joyce Meyer preached, even if you're afraid, you can still do it. Afraid. In Isaiah, God said, don't panic, I'm with you. There's no need to fear, for I'm your God. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady, keep a firm grip on you. Isaiah 41:10. I had a flashback of hearing my radio song and thought, oh well, at least I won't be singing. I told Gwen that I would appear on the show three weeks later. In the green room, which was really a converted restroom, Gwen and I held hands and prayed that we would give honor to God, only say what he wanted us to say, and keep our mouths shut if we weren't supposed to say something. I nervously watched the door, waiting for it to swing open and have the runner tell us that we could come to the stage. She laughed when she saw me sweating. Gwen wasn't afraid at all, but I was looking for a chair to crawl under. We went on stage and the host asked us about our friendship. That was an easy subject. Next, he asked about a town I used to live in and I mentioned a song my mom and dad wrote when they were bored. All of a sudden, I heard myself singing, There's a Snake, in front of a live audience. 
Then I made a funny face and made me, oh, that made me look like I had four chins. And Gwen did her Bucky Beaver face. We covered some other subjects and then he had us make some closing remarks. Wisdom from our days on earth. We left the stage and hugged each other. We recounted the things we each regretted having done. Why did I sing that song? Why did I make that horrible face? I'm not sure I conveyed what I was trying to say. I should have looked into the camera when he asked us to talk to the audience. The man who was removing our microphones said, I don't know what you ladies are talking about. What you said was great. So maybe it wasn't so bad. At least I'd confronted my fears and my friend was proud of me. But over the next two weeks, I kept mulling it over and over in my mind. Why did I start singing that ridiculous song? I have the worst singing voice. Why did I make that crazy face? I must have looked like an idiot. Then one day, God answered me. I needed to see if you would be a fool for me. Well, God, I guess I passed that test with flying colors, I laughed. It dawned on me that God might ask me again to do things that felt embarrassing to me. Even if it seemed foolish, my willingness to perform might free others to be uninhibited since I was far from perfect. And God did. One year later, God had me teach 19 ninth graders all 66 books of the Bible by singing a song with my terrible voice. Many times they joined in with me as I sang. Believe me, we didn't sound like the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, but we all had fun and they learned the names of the sorry, they learned the names of the books with ease. No one seemed intimidated. Sometimes I use my four chin face to make kids laugh when they are taking themselves too seriously. Now I understand God re God's reasoning a little better. Ezekiel said, The Spirit lifted me and took me away. I went bitterly and angrily. I didn't want to go, but God had me in his grip. Ezekiel 3, 14 Do you know what God asked Ezekiel to do? He wanted Ezekiel to warn the Israelites about their sins. God commanded him to eat a book that tasted like honey to rebuild a model of military siege. Then get an iron skillet and place it upright between you and the city, 413, and then lie on his left side for 390 days. This was to symbolize how long they would be punished. One day for each year they had sinned. God said, I will tie you up with ropes tie you so you can't move or turn over until you have finished the days of the siege. 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 That's a hard word. Ezekiel 4, 8. Then God asked him to prepare a special type of bread to eat for that entire time. But here is the clincher. He said, bake the muffins out in the open where everyone can see you using dried human dung for fuel. Ezekiel 4.12 Ezekiel really threw a fit about that, so God said he could use cow dung. I'm sure that wasn't a huge consolation to Ezekiel. He must have felt stupid. You caught his protest. I went bitterly and angrily. I did not want to go. My video stopped. Let's play it again. All right, back to reading. You caught his protest. I went bitterly and angrily. I did not want to go. 
But Ezekiel did what he was told in spite of how he felt. He was definitely a fool for God. God might have even asked Sherry, the little girl who once crawled under a chair, to appear on a web series or to publish a book for the world to read. In 1 Corinthians, Paul says, Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise humans. I am so sorry. Not many of you were wise by human standards. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 27, NIV. So even though Gwen and I didn't make the final edit, I guess I was qualified. The scripture also qualified me to be an author. Just call me a fool for God. Do you feel inadequate or unqualified to do the job that God has called, or I'm sorry, has set before you? Maybe you need to read 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 27 again. I bet you're more qualified than you thought. So get out from under that chair or whatever you're hiding, wherever you've been hiding. God has something for you to do, too. It can't be anything worse than what he asked of poor old Ezekiel. Okay, guys, so that's chapter 17 of the book Sheep Ears by author Sherry Witt. Um, you can go out on Amazon. I will put the link in the comments um, to purchase her book because after each chapter, she does have um, kind of an introspective look for yourself. Um, she asks a couple of questions and then um, she offers some scriptural based answers um, along with where they're found in the Bible. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to try to continue this series and we'll keep uh, checking out this beautiful navy blue uh, lyrical costume. It was absolutely stunning on stage. Um, as you can see, it's going to have a lot of rhinestones on it. Um, we're talking complete coverage. So thank you guys for stopping by. As always, I appreciate you. Um, I want you guys to have a safe day. Sparkle on. But be kind as you do it and come back and listen to stories with the stoner tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.